good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about how I got to this stage because um, there's, I think, some of the things that I thought of when I got into politics that there was a, a traditional route and you had to have a certain education, and there's not really. We really need a diversity in voices today. Um, so back in August uh, 2015, I got an email from my friend who said, you know, you're always shouting at the television and um, getting angry about stuff and writing to your MP. Um, there's this new party started. Do you fancy joining? Um, and that was the Women's Equality Party, because um, we're celebrating today the three years of being a political party, which is really exciting. Um, so I joined a five-month-old party, which is quite a different way to get into politics, um, because a lot of people would have uh, joined one of the more traditional uh, older parties. So I did this because I was tired of politics not representing who I was. Um, I couldn't see any of the parties at that particular time talking to me or, or any of the issues. Um, my upbringing, um, I grew up on a council estate in North Liverpool um, and I left school with no qualifications. Um, so it's so all looking really bright at the moment. Um, and from then I had a job such as cleaning, I worked in a market stall, I eventually got onto an apprenticeship um, so that helped me sort of get some education and some qualifications and I worked really really hard but I always knew that my ambitions were always going to be limited by what other people saw a working class woman should do. So it didn't put me off, I was really, really stubborn and determined and I kept going and I ended up being, um, I ended up working for a global manufacturer um, in the security industry and I was the first woman on the UK board. But even when I got to that stage, I still felt that I was limited by my gender and by what people thought I should be. Um, so I felt like I was still an outsider there um, and this was the sort of the realisation, the moment that I thought actually this is more than me you know this is there other women feeling like this and then i joined the party and i realized actually there was like hundreds and hundreds of women feeling like this the, the the inequalities that we faced were actually built into the structures around us um so that's sort of the journey that got me to the, the women's equality party well i've never been involved in politics before so at the beginning i was just like okay, I'm gonna get involved in this, I'm going to help shape the branch, get people to join, campaign. At that moment, running as a candidate wasn't really in my mind. Um, and the first, the first meeting, um, our founding leader happened to be at the first meeting I went to. So, you know, naively I thought the leaders popped along to all the meetings. <laughs> so that was, that was quite interesting. But um, what appealed to me about the party I chose to join and chose to represent is that I felt that my voice was heard. I was able to input into policies. So that gave me confidence that I was somewhere, um, and I think this is really important, you've got to find your people and find out where you belong. So um, fast forward to the summer of 2016, um, we knew that the Liverpool City region mayoral elections were coming up. So myself and the rest of the team said this is a fantastic opportunity to raise the issue of gender equality and women's places in Merseyside and Holton. So we started saying, right, what are the things we're going to campaign on? And one of the key issues we wanted to campaign on um, was the fact that we had some of the highest levels of violence against women in the whole of the country. And there was no combined strategy to actually not just tackle it, but actually end violence against women and girls. So we thought, well, devolution's an exciting time. It's supposed to be about thinking of the future. It's supposed to be about creating this whole new area and, and using funds locally. So let's campaign for that. And um, so we started working with some local experts. And I think this is really important. If you're going to run and talk about specific issues, make sure you know them inside out. Um, so then what happened to make me run? Um, I blame party conference. So again, make sure you're really involved in the party that you choose to be with as much as possible. Um, I got talking at the end of, end of conference day to some of the people who'd ran in our London elections. And they said, great, I love these ideas that you've got. However, um, if you're not actually at the hustings in part of the debate, you're just really another campaign group, you're not a political party. So we went back and we sort of thought about this um, and then we said, okay. And sort of the strategy that we put together was, was a business case. First of all, we had to convince the, um, the party that we, we could put a candidate forward and then we had to go through the selection process. 
So this is really important. If you are going to run, treat it like you would any business or if you're a teacher, you know, a lesson plan. But think about, you know, what am I running on? Why am I running? How am I going to raise money? Um, who's going to come out knocking on doors with me? And what does success look like? And this is really important for me because um, I wasn't naive enough to think that this was going to be an uphill struggle in Liverpool. Um, I always joke, um, and this is not this is this is not a, a criticism, but you know, it's Liverpool is so labour loyal that it's very very hard for anyone else to win here. So I thought, well, if if I don't win from some massive injustice, what would success look like? What what really matters to us? So what we did is we said that success would obviously be winning and being able to really change the agenda. But if we didn't win, we would make sure whoever did win actually implemented that strategy to end violence against women and girls. So during the campaign, we put events on, we invited all the candidates along, we made a lot of noise in the press so that we got all of the candidates, um, bar two, to sign up to the fact that they would agree to this strategy. And because of the profile it created and because every hustings I talked about ending violence against women and girls, I talked about affordable childcare, I talked about all these gendered issues. A week and a half after the elections had happened, um, I got the phone call from the newly elected uh, mayor to say, can you help me write the strategy? So to us, okay, we, we won, you know, one and a half percent of the vote. It's a tiny amount, but I felt that we did win something in the Liverpool City region. I think that's really important. If you're going to be running for Labour or the Conservatives, it's a different strategy because you may be running in a safe seat that is, is, easy to, is easier to win. They're never easy. But always think about maybe the first time you don't win, that does not mean you, you shouldn't run again. It just means that that's sort of your practice. And what does success look like? Um, so what are some of the things I think, no matter what party w w you run for, I think some of the things that um, it is refreshing to see from women is to do politics differently. I think the public is so tired with the combative uh, nature of parties and politics where we all blame each other for things not happening instead of actually getting stuck in and, and fixing it. So don't come up with the same old policies. Think about things through different people's lenses and look to your own lived experience as well. So my lived experience was a white working class woman. So, you know, I talk from that, that, that perspective. Think about those who were the furthest first in your community. So what I mean by those, those who are doubly, triply disadvantaged. And think about how, how making their lives different would be. And I think that's really interesting. And it's, it's, a, it's a different way to, to look at politics and it will make you stand out. Um, one of the things I'm glad I never listened to is that I was told that running for a small, um, newly started political party would have no impact whatsoever. And I'm glad I completely ignored that piece of advice. So surround yourself with people who not an echo chamber but who are positive and who think like you who will be a critical friend to you during the campaign but will also have your back as well um, and as for navigating the party systems are all completely different so i can only talk from our party system but i found that you know networking talking to people who'd already ran learning from their experiences um, and also making sure that you involve people um, from your networks because you need people out campaigning. Um, so make sure you get lots of volunteers, people who will help you uh, to raise money. Um, and understand what's worked and what's not worked before. So again, make sure you, you sort of keep your networks as, as wide as possible. Um, so absolutely, I think my time is probably coming up. Is it, Eve? <laughs> um, so, I think the things I would recommend is know your um, know what you want to stand for, know what success looks like for you. If obviously we all want to be elected, but also know what sort of your backup plan is to say that you've really made a difference. Look at your lived experience, but also look at those furthest in your community who are completely disadvantaged two or three or four times and create policies that will help them because that is how not only having, it's not just about having women in politics, it's about doing politics differently. And I think that's really important.